One of the sure ways for things to sound bad is a result of a phenomenon known as phase cancellation. It's important to understand how phase cancellation happens and how to avoid it. One of the most important and overlooked aspects of recording is to make sure that all the mics are in phase if more than one is to be used at the same time. The reason is because with only a single out-of-phase mic, a multi-miced instrument like a drum kit will just never sound right, and if not corrected, may never be able to be fixed. So just what is phase, anyway? Without getting into an intense technical explanation, it just means that the outputs of all microphones used on the session are pushing and pulling together as one. If one mic is pushing while another is pulling, they cancel each other out at certain frequencies. When mic number one signal peaks, mic number two signal valleys. They cancel each other out at that frequency, and the result is a very weak sounding signal when mixed together. Here, both mics are pushing and pulling together. Their signal peaks happen at the same time as does their valleys. As a result, their signals reinforce one another. There are two types of phase cancellation problems that can happen, electronic and acoustic. An acoustic phasing problem occurs when two mics are too close together and pick up the sound from the same instrument. Only one is picking it up a little later than the first because it's a little farther away. With acoustic phase problems, the sounds won't cancel each other out completely, only at certain frequencies. When the two are mixed together, this usually makes them sound either hollow or just lack depth in bottom end. The way to eliminate the problem is by moving mic number two a little further away from mic number one. And if the mics are directional, make sure that each one is pointing directly at the source that they're trying to capture. The 3 to 1 principle states that in order to avoid phase cancellation between microphones, a second mic should never be within three times the distance that the first mic is from its source. For instance, if a pair of microphones were placed over the soundboard of a piano at a distance of one foot, the separation between the two mics should be at least three feet. If the distance from the source was two feet, the distance between the mics should be at least six feet. This principle is not a hard and fast rule, but it certainly is a good guideline for eliminating phase problems. Remember, if you record something with a phase problem, no amount of EQ or processing can ever make it right afterwards.